Dream Entertainment is arguably the most successful entertainment company in Jamaica. So if you're in the event planning or party promotion business and you're looking to take that business to the next level, you can definitely learn a thing or two from them. I'm Khalilo Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. My guest today is Managing Director of Dream Entertainment, Scott Dunn. Hi, Scott. Welcome to Money Moves JA. Thanks for having me, Kalila. So you've been in this business for quite a long time. How long have you been doing this? Um, since 1994. So that's about wow. 28 years. So yeah, that, that's, a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you have big people 28 and younger than that. Yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. And how long with Dream Weekend? Well, Dream Entertainment. Uh, so we started in Dream Entertainment in 2009, and that was our first year of Dream Weekend. So... That's about what, 13 years into mm. Dream Weekend. You're one of the original founders? Yeah, I'm one of the founders, yeah. We know Dream Weekend from, mm. you know, the party series in Negril, yeah. but now you've expanded. Tell me about what Dream Entertainment encompasses now. All right, so well, we have two major brands, which are Dream Weekend and Exodus Carnival. Dream Weekend, you know, in Negril since 2009, four to five day festival, where we do anywhere from seven to 10 events per year. And then Exodus Carnival, which is now the largest uh, mass band in Carnival and the largest player in the Carnival space. So uh, it's two large brands. We have Dream Weekend in New York. We're doing Dream Weekend in Malta in Europe for the first time this wow. year. Yeah. And, you know, we do a number of uh, corporate functions as well. So we, you know, we execute events on behalf of a number of clients, including Port Authority. We do a lot of work for Grace Kennedy. Um, Red Bull, BCIC, a number of corporate clients. That's amazing. So I would say that you're coming, mm. you're slowing down now because August gone, Dream Weekend gone, but you have all these other events no, to plan no, for no. still. Yeah, so no, I said we have um, Dream Weekend Malta September 8th to 11th. So that's a, you know, a four day festival in Malta with you know huge uh, dance hall lineup. We're saying it's probably the biggest dance hall lineup ever um, in Europe. We have Popcorn, Ding Dong, Beanie Man, Bounty Killer. So a huge lineup, and then we follow that. The, the following weekend, we have a launch for Dream Weekend New York in, in Brooklyn. So Amazing how you've been able to scale all of this in 13 years, yeah. which is, which is you know, a powerhouse in entertainment, because yeah. entertainment, a lot of people try a thing in entertainment. Everybody is a party promoter. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to hear from you as well. How do you take uh, your business from being just a hustle party promoter to what you've been able to build? Yeah, so I mean... That's exactly it. Is we kind of took away the, the hustle mentality out of it. So, you know, all of my partners, we got into it initially just, you know, as something on the side. What we always found with entertainment is like a lot of people fell into entertainment. It was people who, you know, probably weren't serious about doing anything else and they thought entertainment was something easy to do, keeping parties or something easy to do. We took a total different approach. We looked at it as, you know, from day one when we got in, we looked at it as a business. And we try to bring in people, you know, who are business minded and people, you know, who, who are serious about business. So, you know, like on our team, we have, you know, people, you know, we have somebody with a master's degree in project management and business engineering. You know, we have people with, um, you know, marketing degrees, IT degrees. So it's, you know, very strong skill sets, people who could have big corporate jobs anywhere, run, you know, different types of business, but people who have a passion for entertainment, for event planning and decided this is the route they want to go and to be a part of building this dream with us. Mm. So what would you say is the core of it then? The core of it essentially is, you know, this focus on, on really trying to build something, you know, a huge, what we call entertainment tourism, event tourism, this event tourism brand, to build something for Jamaica, something that we can, you know, export globally, but ultimately um, bring people to Jamaica to experience entertainment in Jamaica. Right, because a lot of people might not know that the majority of people who attend Dream Weekend in Jamaica are come from outside Jamaica, come right. as tourists. Yeah, so again, our two biggest events we see that. So Dream Weekend in the Grill, you're looking at about 60% international. Uh, Exodus Carnival, you're looking at about 70% international. Big diaspora markets predominantly. So New York has always been a huge market for us. Um, with Dream Weekend in the Grill, this year our biggest market was actually the UK. Tons of people out of you know London, Birmingham, Manchester, and all over the United Kingdom. A lot of Europeans, 
you know, people from Canada, South Florida, Atlanta. So it's a, a huge international event. You know, you're talking about tens of thousands of internationals traveling for the event each year. So I want to get into what does it take to pull off an event of this scale, but I want to start smaller first. For the person who's watching this right now, who is already a party promoter or wants to be, or wants to throw their first party, maybe Christmas or New Year's, how do you get started in this industry? Well, I always tell people start small. I think a lot of people who try to get in sometimes, you know, um, probably hang their basket where they can't reach and they want to, you know, they see big events and aspire to that and want to do that on day one. There's nobody that's big in entertainment, big in the event business that started. Big. We all started with little bottle parties, house parties, and grew from that. You now we've seen a lot of people, they, you know, they don't want to start small and they're trying to do these big things, but big events cost a lot of money and right. it's a lot of money at risk. Even at our stage, you know, we still have, you know, big events where, you know, there's a lot of money at risk. And, and you could be and losing then bam, money. COVID. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you had carnival cancel, <laughs> dream cancel. Exactly. Um, so, you know, what I tell people is start small, and be realistic in terms of, you know, your budgets and, you know, how many people you expect in that event, you know. I hear people in the first event, oh, you're going to get 3,000 people. No, you're not going to get 3,000 people at your first event. That just doesn't happen. It's just, I've never heard it happen to anybody anywhere in the world with the first event like that. So be realistic. And I say, budget, budget, budget. Like, you know, so many people go into events and don't even know what the event is going to cost them. Mm -hmm. And then they end up losing them shirt and not understanding why. So, so what do you need? So you need a venue, right. you need some liquor, some drinks, yeah. a, a DJ. What, yeah. what, 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 do you, what does it really take to pull off an event? Um, so the venue obviously is one and, and, and stuff around the venue, making sure the venue is clean. And then, set, and then setting up the venue, right, exactly, secure. So, you know, you're going to have the production. So whether that's, a, you know, it can just be a small sound system, it can literally just be a couple of uh, monitor boxes. It doesn't have to be a big sound system. Obviously, you need somebody to play that music. So you need a DJ. You need to market the event, so you need to advertise some Promotions. more. That's actually become a lot easier or cheaper, but you know, with the advent of social media. So when I started off, there was there was no social media, so you had to print flyers, you had to go from event to event, barber shop to hairdresser, mm -hmm. you know, to pharmacy to gas station, handing out flyers everywhere. Now you can literally do radio, everything. TV. Yeah, exactly. And now you have you can literally do everything digitally, and you can do it for free. Um, I said that wasn't possible in the past. Uh, so yeah, there's a the marketing, you obviously need to have some form of a security in place, you need a, a team in place, somebody to collect the money, you need to print tickets, um, you need to have a, you know, some form of bar, whether that's with alcohol or not, um, you know, somebody selling those drinks, some, you know, whether that's bartenders, people collecting the money for the drinks. Uh, so those are some of the main elements uh, that come to mind. What's yeah. the most expensive part of putting on an event? For us, typically, it would be production, um, mm. production and talent uh, from our standpoint. For most people with a small talent event. Talent meaning like entertainers? Yes. Like you have popcorn for it, Malta? Right. So like artists, people uh, really don't understand how expensive big names um, in dance hall are. Uh, so that, you know, for like... How, how much does it cost to book a, a, a um, major like, dance hall artist right now? Well, uh, without calling names, I'd say the, the, the top, Three people in dance hall are all over fifty thousand US per show right now. So you're talking about seven and a half, eight million Jamaican upwards for the big, big names in dance hall. Anybody top fifteen is over a million Jamaican right now um, to do an event. Yeah, for, I just saw to, a report that Burner mm, Boy is five hundred thousand US. Exactly. Plus, plus the private plus jet. Plus the private jet and <laughs> plus the private jet and, and a whole bunch of riders. So yeah. And I say, you know, while nobody in dance hall is there yet, there, there are people moving in that direction. Uh, and I mean, we're happy for them. It's, only thing is for, for a market like Jamaica, our market can't sustain prices like that. Yeah. So that's why you'll see some of the, you know, the big names that people love in dance hall. You don't see them performing in Jamaica very often because we just can't charge enough or have venues big enough or, you know, attract crowds that big. Because when you're paying, you know, five hundred thousand dollars for Burner Boy, it needs to be somewhere that a there's going to be thirty thousand people yeah. paying a, a average a hundred dollars a ticket or something, you know, for a show like that to make sense. So, mm. what's mm. the most difficult part? Uh, most difficult part is, I mean, I, I say it's just kind of staying relevant, you know, like again, being, you know, you know, relevant year in year out. 
Because yeah. again, with entertainment, things are, tend to trend. And because before Dream, you know, there was ATI, yeah, RTI. Yeah. Right. So I mean, I was involved in ATI before Dreams has involved probably, you know, for f- maybe four years at ATI with my event Yush, and then I said actually Dream was really came out of the competition between ATI and mm-hmm. RTI, and it was, you know, some of the promoters on ATI, some of the promoters on RTI got together and said, hey. Rather than us competing, if we brought the best events from each weekend together, that would really be a dream weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what everybody would love. Um, so that's that's really how it came about. It was, you know, ATI and RTI really were the genesis of, of what is now. So staying weekend. relevant is the challenge. I think uh, certainly for somebody that's in it as long as me to be in entertainment twenty eight years and be relevant over how do twenty eight years is constantly reinventing, but also staying. Um, you know, having a core and realizing there's certain things that are always going to be important. You know, being professional, you know, putting on, you know, having you know, a good secure event, you know, delivering on promises and whatever you advertise that you're going to have that or, or more than that um, is always important. But also paying attention to trends, you know, which artists are relevant, you know, and, and balancing that with who's relevant and who's going to put on a good performance. Because mm-hmm. that's not always the same person. True, true. So there might be an artist, you know, you know, we find out a lot with a young dancehall artist. A lot of them hot, have some hot songs, but you put them on a stage and it's a different thing. Versus, ready. you know, you bring a beanie man, a bounty killer, a spice, a sizzler, a caper to they a stage. They deliver every They're going to deliver, you know, day in, day out. So, you know, you see that with our events that, you know, we, we balance that with, you know, who's hot and trending. But also, who would know that we, you know, we can, you know, you know, bang, you know, give you that bang for buck every time. All right. So now you want to scale. You're the promoter watching, and you want to throw an event outside Jamaica now, because your boss now, and your big like dream weekend. What does it take? So I mean, you can look at it in various ways. We've done it different ways. So we've done stuff on our own outside of Jamaica, and that's easier in, in like closer markets and markets we're more familiar with. So like done stuff on our own in South Florida. New York event we pretty much did for the most part um, on our own. I mean, we had um, people on the ground that helped us, but no actual partner in the event. Uh, going somewhere as far as Malta, uh, we have a partner on that event. So we are you know, working with somebody who's done large festivals in Europe before. So I tell you, so our partner on the event is some guys that do a festival called Afro Nation in Portugal, which is a festival with like 30,000 people. Um, in Portugal. Um, actually, Chris Brown was on it this summer. Shensia was on it. Bini, I think, was on it as well. They do another festival in Malta already, and they just said, you know, just the landscape, they said it's so much like Jamaica. It's set up a lot like Negril in terms of how the venues are set up, the beach venues and stuff. The weather is almost identical uh, to Negril, so they thought it would be a good fit. Um, again, they already know the logistics on the ground, they have the contacts, re-permits and stuff. So, and it's, it's close enough to a big feeder market for us, which is the UK. Uh, so again, it's, you know, flights are pretty reasonable from the UK. We already have a strong following in the UK and Europe. So it really necessarily won't be a lot of people from Malta per se, but primarily people out of the UK and from, and from Europe. What yeah. are your margins in this industry? Margins can vary um, tremendously um, from event to event. I said typically, and they're higher than most businesses. So typically, somewhere around fifty percent. But it um, nice. yeah, can vary just depending on the type of festivals. And then obviously, most new events that we do, the first you know two to three years, you don't you, you don't tend to see any profit coming out of those. So there's um, building the you're building the brand. But again, um, usually once you get that the brand set and. Uh, it, it usually pays off well over the long term. Legally, what type of permits do you need? Um, so the the basic permit you need for every event is is an amusement license, which is issued by um, the parish council, uh, the municipal corporation. Um, so like in Kingston and St. Andrew, that's KSAMC. Uh, so you have to apply for an amusement license, depending on the size of the venue, is how much they charge for it. And then you also have to get permission um, from the police uh, depending on venues um, or you know how strict they are within, you know sometimes you may need a fire permit. Um, some government venues you also need um, ad pem approval, ministry of health approval. So it can be um, pretty wide, uh, but typically the average event that you see in Jamaica have a 
amusement license and permission from the local police. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, police love come lock off party. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? You get an extension or how does that work? Um, so, I mean, basically you have till 2 a.m. On, um, on a weekend night until midnight during the week. Extensions are kind of tricky because it's not really written into law. Um, but, you know, large, large events, you know, festivals tend to get some kind of leeway on the time. Right, because like a some fest go till morning. Yeah. There is no... <laughs> so sometimes some of the smaller promoters get, get upset about that, why they can't get that. But you also have to recognize the economic impact that something like Sunfest right. or Dream Weekend or Carnival has is, is, is significantly different. I mean, you know, something that brings billions to the economy you can understand why it gets a little leeway and something that obviously people traveling from halfway across the world versus... In a local community event, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to justify. Are nightclubs completely out now, like officially dead? Ah, uh, they're, yeah, they're pretty dead right <laughs> now, to be honest. Um, I mean, outside of like Ribby's, which has become kind of like a nightclub, I mean, Ribby's is really more of a, a restaurant and bar, but it's kind of operates a lot like a, like a nightclub. There's really no nightclub market anywhere in the country yeah is that unique to jamaica or no it's across i feel like it's yeah that seems to be i don't you know most i mean most places i travel to obviously nightclubs are a big part of, of nightlife and it's probably necessary in jamaica because again it eliminates the whole noise nuisance factor so we do need indoor spaces where we can have events but for whatever reason just Nightclubs haven't flourished recently. Yeah, it's not uh, popular anymore. More. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I wish you all the best with your new event in Malta and many more to come. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Here's a recap of Scott's key points. Even though it's entertainment, you still need to have a business outlook if you want to excel in the industry. Hiring people who are serious about the field will take your business to the next level. Start small and be realistic with your budget. To pull off an event. To pull off an event, here are the main things you'll need. An amusement license, a venue, sound system, DJ, a marketing strategy, security, a team, a bar, and bartenders. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Visit their website at eximbankja.com and follow them all over social media at eximbankja. You can find a summary of this episode on my website, kalilareynolds.com. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Till next time.